But what made the Mosasaur such a monster killer? Millions of years of evolution created a perfect formula for the perfect killer. This is how you make an apex predator. First and foremost, breathing. Like whales, mosasaurs can spend long hours submerged in the sea, but they still have to come up for air. And then there's food. Fish are nutritious, but they're fast and slippery. To catch them, mosasaurs must develop the skills of an efficient hunter. Another part of the formula, hearing. In the water, sound location becomes a prime method for hunting. Mosasaurs modify their terrestrial ear into a super amplification system that makes sounds 38 times louder. In his studies of the Mosasaur, paleontologist Dr. James Lamb has been able to reconstruct the creature's hearing mechanism. This little piece fits in this pit and moves back and forth. And then this piece fits here, and a small movement in this first piece creates a large movement in this one. So it's a system that's finely tuned for conducting sound through water. Even though sound can lead them to the prey, it's difficult to detect a target if it's in murky water. Here, Mosasaur would have the advantage by using the keen sense of smell inherited from its land-based ancestors. A Mosasaur like this would have had a tongue that would have functioned exactly like a monitor lizard's tongue. The reason why the tongue is forked is so that the animal can smell in two different directions at the same time. This is smelling in stereo. One more addition to our killing formula. Sonar. The last piece in the puzzle is this set of nerves that run down the side of the upper jaw and especially are concentrated here in the snout. And it's a system for detecting the pressure wave given off by the prey. Mosasaur uses this pressure wave sonar to hunt, much like modern killer whales use echolocation. All these adaptations mean Mosasaur has a good chance of locating dinner, but they still have to catch it and chasing down fast, elusive prey requires jet-like speed. So how does an eight-ton, 50-foot monster propel itself? This alligator has another piece of our formula, a massive tail. Along with crocodiles, gators have a long, flattened tail shape similar to mosasaurs. They use the whip-like action of their tails to move quickly through the water. One of the things you notice, first off, when you look at a mosasaur, is fully half the length is the tail. Mosasaurs retain their terrestrial lizard shape, except for the tail, which evolves from a round, snake-like shape into a wide, flat paddle. If you look at the vertebra on the tail, they have expanded bony struts, top and bottom for the swimming organ that helps them swim. Using modern gators and crocs as a comparison, scientists estimate a mosasaur can reach a top speed of 30 miles an hour. Its whip-like tail is good for quick acceleration, but not sustained high-speed chases. Fish are built to swim fast and far. Mosasaurs won't win a marathon, so they have to strike quickly. Which means this enormous beast has to somehow hide its 50-foot body and ambush its prey. Imagine that this animal is sitting on the bottom, takes a deep breath, it just waits there for something to swim by close enough 
that it can get that sustained burst of speed to go out and catch it. Speed and surprise are two critical elements, but Mosasaurs also need agility. That's where the paddles come in. They propel themselves with the tail, they steer with the paddles. These paddles are short and strong, allowing this long lizard to corner on a dime. Like flaps on an airplane wing, the paddles create drag, which makes them turn. For mosasaurs to be successful underwater, there was one land-based trait they absolutely had to jettison, their sensitive inner ear. The inner ear controls a creature's sense of balance. For land-based predators, maintaining balance is critical. If they stumble, their prey escapes. But in water, animals move in every direction, like a gyroscope. An animal with a sensitive inner ear can quickly become dizzy and disoriented. Over the millennia, the mosasaur's inner ear begins to dial down the sensitivity, allowing them to quickly twist and spin with no sickening side effects. These evolutionary refinements created a mega beast. The mosasaur can locate, chase, and catch its prey. But catching is not enough. The mosasaur has to eat. And the way that it eats is something that almost defies imagination. It's a prehistoric creature so vicious, it makes sharks seem cuddly. With jaws like steel, it's large enough to swallow a human in one bite. This underwater T-Rex is bred only to hunt and to kill. And across the oceans of planet Earth, this mega beast rules. But 95 million years ago, mosasaurs had some serious competition from a familiar denizen of the deep, the shark. Prehistoric sharks, like their modern cousins, are vicious and durable. Traveling vast distances, ripping apart any creature that gets in their way. Sharks had been around for over 250 million years when mosasaurs evolved onto the scene. At that time, the largest, fiercest shark in the water was the giant Ginsu shark. The Ginsu would have, of course, looked very much like a modern great white, a very big, heavy-bodied shark. At a length of 25 feet, the aptly named Ginsus are over 10 feet longer than a typical great white. With mosasaurs and ginsus hunting in the same waters, one thing is certain, there will be blood. There was quite a competitive relationship going on when the big sharks and the, the mosasaurs were running into each other frequently. And at, at least at first, the mosasaurs were, were losing a lot. There's definite evidence that sharks attack mosasaurs. You can see right here that there are clear bite marks from the arc of the mouth of a shark that was attacking. These big sharks carved up a lot of mosasaurs. So we find shed teeth, we find bones that are severed during this time. While an adult mosasaur can hold its own against a Ginsu, there are other mosasaurs. Mosasaur couldn't do any of that. So what they've done is to basically make a toothed conveyor belt to help sort of track the prey down its throat. You can look at mosasaur fossils, and you can look at modern analogs that have a skull that works in a broadly analogous way. But sometimes building a model tells you something you just can't find out any other way. Dr. Lamb works with real effects in North Hollywood, California to build a life-size mosasaur skull complete with a set of death-dealing jaws.
The massive steel jaws are powered by pneumatics instead of muscles and ligaments. Never thought I'd see a steel mosasaur skull, but this is very cool looking. We've got three pneumatics, we've got two operators to run it, and we've reduced it to three basic motions. One set of pneumatics opens and closes the jaws. One set moves it backwards and forwards. And the third set runs the pterygoids in the roof of the mouth. The pterygoids are the terminator teeth. No other ocean predator has them. A second set of teeth running down the roof of the mouth. These are a truly fiendish adaptation. They actually work independently to move the prey backwards in the throat and also to hold it still, to pin it down as it opens its mouth for the next bite. Now we see how these jaws worked in deadly concert. The bite, the ratcheting jaw, the terminator teeth. Test one. Find out what the Mosasaur's first bite would do to any creature unlucky enough to get on the wrong end of these teeth. Mosasaurs had a really big bite. So we've got a piece of foam that would be about the same size as an eight or nine foot long shark or maybe part of the neck of a long neck plesiosaur. We're gonna put it sideways in this Mosasaur model's mouth and just see exactly what would have happened. Well, that's gonna leave a mark, isn't it? That's a broken neck. I'm pretty convinced that this thing would have probably killed something with the first bite. First time it bit down and ratcheted back like that, the thing's neck is broken. Test two, measure the capacity of its bite. Very simply, when our metal mosasaur chomps, how much ersatz meat goes into its mouth? We've got this piece of foam with four inch squares painted on it. We're gonna feed it to this mosasaur and see how much with each bite this thing would have dragged its prey down its throat. In one bite, our mosasaur easily consumes four feet of flesh. That means this mosasaur could eat a 20-foot animal in five bites, or an adult human in a single gulp. It's not just the size of the bite. Inside the mouth, the teeth are virtual meat hooks. Dr. Lamb demonstrates with a hunk of ballistics gel, which is similar in consistency to human flesh. If you put a piece of meat in the mouth, it can't move out because the tips of the teeth grab it like a fish hook. So we're just gonna see if we can put this up here on these teeth. 